Open world sandbox games like Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row are a lot of fun to play, not just because of the feeling of choice and exploration, but the fact that you can do a lot of wacky and fun things outside of just doing missions like randomly walking around, spawning a tank, and going on a rampage. To me, that's more iconic with these sorts of games than the actual stories and themes around each campaign. And ever since Rockstar showed that it was possible to do this on a handheld way back on the PSP, a lot of handheld fans have wanted more recent games like this. Sadly, it took quite a long time for them to come back. Rockstar still hasn't played nicely, but the Saints Row developer has. The third game of the franchise that originally released on PS3 and Xbox 360. Here is my review of Saints Row the Third, the complete package for the Nintendo Switch. When it comes to plot, this is actually a continuation of Saints Row 2. So you'll see a few familiar faces if you already played Saints Row 2, like Shondi and Pierce being integral to this story just like they were in the previous game. After the events of the previous game, the Saints have gotten together with a few companies and become sort of celebrities having a lot of comic books and even a movie being made around them. But when they rob a bank to promote their new movie, they're attacked and arrested by corrupt policemen and taken to a group of gangs known as the Syndicate. After losing one of their own and escaping the Syndicate, the boss, or the player character in Shondi, have to build up the Saints from the ground up, arming themselves when not only the Syndicate comes after them, but far bigger organizations and politics as well. The story of this game works well because of how family-oriented all of the main characters are. All of the returning characters are pretty close with the boss, but all of the new characters also become that as you do missions for them, all leading up to a bunch of the big story missions where everyone comes together. When it comes to gameplay, this is an open-world sandbox action game with lots of shooting elements and just a little bit of RPG elements thrown into its upgrade system. As you go through the game, you'll be navigating a large sandbox city while doing missions, activities, or just all around causing mayhem. First and foremost, this is the complete package version of Saints Row the Third. That means all previous DLC is packed in. Once you get access to the sandbox after the game's intro, you're going to be greeted with a good minute or two of constant unlocks with DLC weapons, costumes, vehicles, and gear. This version also sports all of the original cheat codes from the original release. So if you have all of those PS3 and Xbox cheat codes lying around somewhere, just input them and they'll work just like they did before. Just remember that using cheats disables autosaves, so if you want to save your progress, you'll have to do it manually. Basic progression is fairly standard for this kind of game. You've got a huge open world sandbox city that you can freely explore as well as missions that you can access on your cell phone for NPCs to push the story forward. What you do on these missions vary, like raiding a military base and taking down all the guards to steal weapons for yourself, or just taking a nice little cruise across the city to your buddy's crib so you can get a story scene leading up to the next main mission. This is very similar to what you do in Grand Theft Auto games, but there are a few features here and there that make this feel different and more complex. The first, of course, is the co-op feature that lets you tag up with a buddy and tackle missions together. And there's even an option that gives you the same feel when you're playing solo. Whenever you're out in the open world or on a mission, you can use your cell phone to call one of the main characters and they'll come and help you. Granted, not all of these are unlocked right away for you. Sometimes you have to do missions for a certain NPC before they'll actually come out and help you to join your party. And there's even more of a different feel when it comes to the respect and upgrade system, otherwise known as the RPG elements. Whenever you finish up missions, or do random stunts out in the open world like driving in the oncoming lane or balance a vehicle on two wheels, you gain respect, otherwise known as experience points. Eventually, your respect will level up, and with each level, you unlock new content in the form of abilities and upgrades, both for you and your gang members. These upgrades are divided into categories and can enhance a lot of different things to help the gameplay experience. You can improve your own stats, how much respect you get at the end of a mission, how long it takes to revive a teammate, what kind of weapons that your gang members bring into battle, or some more fun and interesting upgrades like being able to go into your cell phone and having a VTOL delivered to your location so you don't have to start from your home base when you want to jump in a plane and start causing some mayhem. But there is one thing I do not like about missions, and that's how repetitive all of the tutorial missions are. Saints Row 3 has a ton of different activities that you can do throughout the city, from picking up hookers to causing mayhem from the seat of a tank. But a lot of the quote-unquote story missions that are required to unlock future main missions introduce you to each of these activities all at the same time. For a very large chunk of the game's second act, you're doing almost nothing but activity mission after activity mission after activity mission. The missions themselves are pretty short, but the sheer number of them just made me want to get through them so I could see the next bit of story rather than all of these activity tutorial missions disguised as story missions. When we get into the actual combat, things get a lot of fun and really nice. 
all of the weapons respond nicely and you've got a huge variety from normal weapons like pistols and rifles to the more gimmicky joke weapons that came with the DLC, like the shark gun that covers an enemy in blood and you just stand and watch until Jaws comes up under him and does his thing. Now all of this comes together well and you've got a pretty decent amount of content here. From start to finish, assuming you don't use cheats, you should be able to get through the entire game in around 15 to 20 hours and a good bit of time more when you start doing the post-game DLC missions. Now let's talk about controls for a moment to go over a couple little nitpicks. The first is how hard it is to aim your gun in this game. No matter how much I played with the sensitivity settings for the X and Y axis, everything felt too gimmicky and too loose. It's extremely difficult to get your aim to run slowly unless you're barely moving the analog stick, let alone when you're trying to move it while you're also running and gunning at the same time. Well, I'm not 100% sure this is the exact reason, but the fact that this game has a good amount of input lag could also be contributing to that. All of your inputs from running, jumping, shooting to just navigating through menus has about a one second delay between you hitting a button and the game recognizing it. Now this isn't going to cause a huge problem for a lot of people who use cheats, but if you're trying to go through the game without cheats and wanting autosave to do its thing, it's probably going to be a hindrance. Now let's dive into presentation. Graphically, there's not that much difference between the original PS3 version and the Switch version. There is a little less draw distance and a few more jagged edges around here and there, but overall it looks very similar and looks pretty much the same between docked and handheld mode but there is a little bug in the game when it comes to the sound effects. On occasion, you won't hear sound effects for certain weapons. I could be firing a machine gun, hear the sound just fine for a couple seconds, and then not hear it for a second or two before it starts playing again. Now let's get onto performance, which this game has been highly criticized for. Before I got the game, I was hearing nothing but official reports and random discussions saying that even after the performance patch, it was completely unplayable. When I started playing through the game, it seemed fairly smooth for the most part, going around 30 frames per second and dipping down into the 20s every once in a while, but not to an extreme level. It seemed pretty okay to me, so I undocked the Switch to see if handheld mode was the culprit, and I got the same performance there as well. There are definitely times when you notice the frame rate going down into the 20s, but it's nowhere near as bad as people th said it was. It might have been on launch day, and if it was, the performance patch did wonders for it. Now let's get into battery life. Saints Row 3 has a battery range of 2 hours and 37 minutes on high settings, up to 3 hours and 7 minutes on low settings. Do note that these battery readings are for the original Switch model, as by the time of making this review, I have not yet acquired the new revision. Now in conclusion, Saints Row's third entry brings open sandbox shooting to handhelds, but does hit some bumps along the way. Now on the downside, it's got some glitches and bugs, along with an absurd number of tutorial missions disguised as story missions. But if you want GTA-like gameplay on the go, it's a fun game, it's got a good story, and the frame rate is nowhere near as bad as it was made out to be. Reviews to Go rates Saints Row the Third, the complete package for the Nintendo Switch, a 6.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.